All right, guys, patch 1.6 is here, and there is a wealth of builds to choose from. I've already made quite a few, and I will be showcasing all of those builds, but you have to start somewhere, so I figured why not pick it up with Deadeye. This has been my favorite gear set for a very long time. I also believe it is one of the strongest builds in patch 1.6 for raw damage output, and has one of the best impacts on the tactical gameplay at this time, so I figured this is a great place to start. I'm going to walk you through all the different gear pieces that I've chosen. I'm going to talk about exactly how you need to build the set to get the most out of it, uh, what I would change on my current set of gear, though there isn't very much. It's practically min-maxed, uh, almost completely, and exactly what weapons and mods, etc. that you need, skills and talents, and then I'll kick it over to some live gameplay. So I'm really excited about this, and let's dive right into it. The composition of the build is actually four pieces of firearms and one piece of stamina, though that is variable. You can switch this up if you'd like to. You can go full glass cannon for higher damage output overall, just by switching that one piece of stamina to firearms. So note that I am running one piece of stamina, but you do not need to run one. You can actually run all five pieces of firearms if you feel like it. I'm also opting to run the Barrett's Bulletproof Vest. Now this is not essential to the build. Uh, talking about my two high ends before I kick it over to my four pieces of Deadeye, this can easily be switched out for a reckless chess piece, which is much more accessible. So if you don't have the Barrett's Bulletproof Vest, never fear, it's not essential to the build. For the specific rolls on the chess piece, I would aim for over 1250 in any main stat that you're choosing to run. So my firearms is somewhere in that vicinity. You can't really tell because I have mods in it for firearms, but I'll talk about that later. So aim for as high a main stat roll as possible. That's just a good rule of thumb for any build. And then for major attributes, you absolutely want health. The rest of the item is kind of up to the user's preference. You know, you don't really have to have protection from elites. That's out of necessity, uh, but you absolutely want health. The reason being, health right now in this amount, and due to the scaling on stamina to health and the ratio there, this is equivalent to about a thousand main stat of stamina, simply from one major attribute on one piece of gear. Now, the common consensus is that health is the new armor. I do not believe that to be true. I think that health is essential on certain pieces, but on others it's not, and I'll talk about that more in just a couple of minutes here. But on the chest piece, indeed, it is essential. So you need health as a major attribute there. And then the second one is up to you. I would actually opt for exotic damage resilience or something like that, or enemy armor damage uh, if I had the choice, but I wasn't able to re-roll it. So there's a lot of you know different small minor ways that you can improve this build further. For the second high-end piece and a no-brainer in this situation, you're going to go with the Tenacious Mask. Now, the reason for this is there was a slight change to medkits. The Tenacious Talent gives you increased damage by 10% for 10 seconds when using a medkit. And the change to medkits allows them to be popped while at full health. This means five times per lifetime, especially in the last stand game mode, where there's a very fast-paced action and you're respawning you know, frequently during the course of the match. Uh, you're going to be able to pop 10% damage for 10 seconds at will five times per life bare minimum unless you pick up medkits along the way this is a very powerful tool and i believe the tenacious mask is now the absolute best in slot for any dps or high damage oriented build uh an essential for this dead eye build and it's going to be very powerful if used properly in tandem with other bonuses for the major and minor attributes there's some flexibility here I've gone with Exotic Damage Resilience, though I could re-roll it, and Damage to Elites. For a minor attribute, Damage to Elites just helps me with clearing random NPCs, and this can be used in PvE. A lot of people may have a question down in the comments after the video is over saying, can this build be used in PvP? Uh, can you touch on the you know versatility of the build? Is it something that's viable in, let's say, Legendary Difficulty or the new Incursion? Yes, absolutely. If you want this build to translate directly into PvE, then just stack enemy armor damage and damage to elites everywhere possible, and the build will absolutely annihilate enemy enemy NPCs uh, in a very unforgiving way. So it's very powerful in both different environments, both PvE and PvP. All you have to do is spec a little bit different in the major and minor attribute slots. Uh, the mask is very versatile, however. You can roll whatever you'd like as a major. There isn't something that's necessarily critical uh, over any other major attribute. Now moving on to the knee pads, this is where uh, the build is going to differ a little bit from the actual best in slot guidelines for patch 1.6. There is going to be, you know, a better role here if you were looking for numerically the optimal way to spec your character, and that would be rolling health as a major attribute on the knee pads. Due to the new scaling of stamina, it would be pound for pound in terms of main stat, better to roll health here, but the damage and the critical hit damage in particular, since you will be critting every single shot with that eye, is better in this situation. And this is a perfect example of certain builds that will go against the mathematically superior way to spec your character while still achieving dramatically powerful results. So the major attribute is 8% critical hit damage here. That's the only essential thing. You can swap this out if you want to go full glass cannon to firearms, like I said previously, but I've opted to run stamina. And for minor attributes, I would always be looking for shock and burn resistance. This was actually not very critical up till this point, but now I feel like it is more valuable than ever to actually look at the minor attributes on specifically the knee pads and look for shock and burn resistance. 
both of these status effects are lethal in PvP, and they're something that you want to mitigate and avoid as much as you possibly can. So shock and burn resistance are not something that you want to shy away from. Moving on to our backpack, you're going to notice the same story as the knee pads. I've opted for critical hit damage. Again, roll as high as you possibly can in the main stat category. For me, it's firearms. Aim for over 1250. And uh, for a major attribute, I have spec critical hit damage. You can, however, if you are worried about survivability and toughness, you can opt for health here. Though I personally recommend going crit hit damage wherever possible. For a minor attribute, I strongly recommend ammo capacity, though a resistance is not necessarily a bad idea. Uh, I would recommend having ammo capacity at least one place on your gear, uh, but having high resistances, especially again of shock and burn, is very, very powerful in PvP especially right now. Now down to the Deadeye Gloves, there's only two major attributes that are absolutely essential here. The third is up in the air. To start off with, the highest possible main stat roll, and then for majors you want marksman rifle damage, that is 100% essential, and then critical hit damage, because it is a large chunk here, it's 16% or more, uh, once the normalization kicks in in last stand, or if you can roll higher than I have. Pistol damage is not essential at all. You can opt to run the secondary weapon type of your choice, something like assault rifle or pistol or SMG if you feel like it, uh, or you can roll any of the other stats on gloves, though I would say specifically, stay away from critical hit chance. You do not need critical hit chance at all with Deadeye, so that's actually a dead stat. So don't roll critical hit chance, but outside of that, you can roll whatever your whatever else your heart desires, as long as you have marksman rifle damage and critical hit damage and a high main stat roll. Last up, we have the Deadeye Quick Draw Holster, and this is an extremely simple item. It always was in patch 1.5, and it still is in patch 1.6. What you have is the highest possible main stats across the board. You can look for a high armor roll as well. And then for major attributes, you just want health. Uh, there are a very specific subset of builds that may run something else here, such as skill haste, maybe reload speed for a very specific build that I'm actually putting out in the near future, maybe over the next couple of days. Uh, but for most builds, the holster is just high main stats and health. For your weapon, I'm just going to talk about my primary. You can run whatever secondary you feel like, but I have gone with a surplus SVD. Now, I would make one key change to this surplus SVD, and that is switching destructive for deadly. I highly recommend having deadly on your gun, but since I know that it's highly unlikely that a lot of players are going to be able to find the exact three optimal gun talents that a lot of builds require, I'm going to show you a non-optimized gun like what I have here that does not have deadly, but it does have prepared and competent. Now the top three talents and the god roll for a Deadeye build is deadly, prepared, and competent with competent in the third slot. However, if you have any combination of those three talents, as long as you have two of them, you are okay and you can have a highly competitive Deadeye build. I would actually recommend having two. I don't recommend just having one. But again, if you had to pick just one, if you can find a semi-automatic marksman rifle with deadly, you're going to be in really good shape. Now, one key change here is that the surplus SVD or an SVD in general is not necessarily the best in slot. If you can get a SCAR H or a Police MK17, etc., something with a much larger magazine size, that may be the optimal way to run the build because you can keep firing for longer periods of time without having to reload. Both are viable options, but with the new change to Deadeye and it requiring you to scope in and actually have a hard scope on the gun and not utilize a red dot sight, I would prefer to have a SCAR H variant type that has a larger magazine size uh, and you know continue firing for longer periods of time. But any semi-automatic marksman rifle with the right talents that again is deadly, prepared, and competent in that order or with prepared and deadly switched or two of those talents is going to be ideal for any Deadeye build. For gear mods, there's a couple of different choices. Number one is for short-term survivability. This is firearms with health. This will allow you to have a larger health pool and allow you to trade in individual fights, let's say one-on-one, -on -one, uh, for longer periods of time absorbing fire so you can win that encounter. If you want you know, more long-term survivability, not short-term, you're going to want to go with firearms mods with skill haste. This means that you'll be able to heal more frequently and you will have less of a health pool in any one given fight, but you'll be able to be topped off before more fights and pop your skills more often. Another thing is that if you have increased skill haste, you are going to be able to pop your booster shot more often, which is one of the skills that you're running, which increases your damage output a little bit more. So for sustainability, you want firearms mods with health for all five of your mods, and for more damage and more long-term survivability, uh, to be able to be topped up in more fights, you're going to want firearms with skill haste. For all of my performance mods, I have opted to run pulse critical hit damage. This is the best way to increase burst overall, and I would highly recommend it. However, if you're more in touch with survivability, then you can run first aid self heal. That is also a viable alternative and will keep you alive in a lot more situations. Modding a Deadeye sniper rifle is fairly straightforward, but there's a couple specific things to watch out for. Number one, you want an extended magazine with critical hit damage. And instead of critical hit chance, like what I have here, you should all be aiming for having rate of fire or reload speed. 
For your underbarrel, you want critical hit damage as the main attribute, and then you want accuracy and optimal range. For your vent break or your muzzle break of any kind, you want critical hit damage, again, optimal range and accuracy. Stay away from critical hit chance here. And then for a scope, specifically, you want the C79 scope 3.4 times. This has critical hit damage as a major attribute, and it is required to hard scope in, and this does not work with a red dot sight. So again, the C79 is your absolute best bet, and stay away from critical hit chance. For abilities, I recommend running Pulse with Scrambler, as it does conceal you from enemy pulses, though a viable alternative is the Recon Pack now. There were some adjustments made to this skill, and the dramatic thing to notice is that the cooldown is significantly decreased from the Scrambler Pulse. So if you run the Recon Pack, you can fire this Pulse off a lot more frequently, as well as the fact that it has slightly increased critical hit damage. So that is a notable alternative if you don't want to run Scrambler and you want to be using the Pulse more frequently, though I would highly recommend mitigating enemy pulses through the use of the Scrambler mod. Again, Recon Pack is a viable alternative. Outside of that, you want to be running Booster Shot. This is non-negotiable. You absolutely need this skill. You're going to be popping it right before encounters to increase your damage and your mitigation, and this is one of the core tools in the build. For your signature, I would highly recommend Recovery Link, not just because it's valuable to your teammates in teamfighting scenarios in PvP, especially in Last Stand, but also because it's a very valuable tool when going into a 1v2 or 1v3 scenario to make sure that your health is regening over time, and if you break line of sight, you can then uh, use that regen to get back up to full health and then engage again, uh, and usually you will win that because you have dramatically higher damage than most of the other builds in existence right now. For talents, not much has changed since 1.5. When you are in a group, you're going to want triage. That's a very unselfish way to play. It's going to help everyone out that's in your squad. So I would highly recommend having this as soon as you are in a group of two or more players. Uh, but when you're not in a group, you can switch out triage for something like TAC Advance, as you won't get as much value out of it. Uh, and TAC Advance does increase your damage even further. But again, in a group, you want triage. You're going to want critical save. That's essential. 20% for 10 seconds when using a medkit at low health is still a phenomenal increase to survivability. Regardless of the fact that it was nerfed by uh, 50% and it used to be 40%, it's still very, very powerful. So I would recommend running that. And then you want strike back. Any method of reducing your own cooldowns is highly valuable now, especially with the increased timer on most of the skills. Uh, and most builds not specking into electronics as much as they should be, considering that hybrid builds are now king. But that's a whole nother video. So I would highly recommend anything that reduces cooldowns as much as possible. And then you do want on the move. It is very, very easy to drop downed enemy agents with this Deadeye build. You can actually kill them in one to two shots maximum with a semi-automatic sniper. So you're going to get a ton of value out of on the move and trigger it at will. Especially on red NPCs in something like Last Stand. There's a ton of value here, so I would highly recommend it. So here we are in Last Stand, and I talk a little bit about the tactical functions of the build. Number one, you deal tremendous amounts of damage. That's a given. Everyone was already expecting that, and they already knew that. Uh, I used this on the PTS. I was able to achieve much higher numbers, but I had a perfectly min-max version of the build there, and this is only a you know medium-level min-max version of the build. Uh, you're going to be able to achieve higher numbers than this, somewhere upwards of 70 to 90,000 damage per shot. Uh, in certain instances, which is extremely powerful. You can annihilate enemy agents, especially the ones that don't want to use cover. And that brings us to the most valuable portion of the build. The ability to punish the previous and kind of current meta tactical gameplay, which is hip fire spam and running around like headless chickens in circles out of cover. Players that do not tactically use cover, and specifically players that don't break line of sight, uh, frequently during encounters, which is something I've been trying to force myself to get in the habit of, are going to get absolutely wrecked by a Deadeye build. You can deal huge amounts of per bullet damage, and it doesn't matter where you hit them on the body. If you hit them in the toe, or in the arm, or the finger, it doesn't matter. It's still going to deal upwards of 50, 60, to 90 sometimes thousand damage. Now, you can fight up close, but I would say that that is where your disadvantage is. The build can deal just as much damage up close. However, your turning radius is, you know, extremely wide. It's very hard to track your targets if they are very close to you and, you know, strafing back and forth uh, because your, your reticle, when zoomed fully in with the C79, you know, it doesn't have a great turning speed. You can kind of overcome this on PC, and I currently play on console, so everything that you're seeing here took place on console. But right there, like I just showed, when they get close and you can't track fast enough, especially on console, you may end up going down. Uh, because you're not able to land the shots. Now, some players are going to be able to land more shots than me. Again, this build is really subjective in the right hands. It's going to be able to wipe out entire servers or win entire last stand game modes on by itself. Uh, and you're able to drop a ton of agents very quickly. 
but there are further ways to min max the build and it is a little bit different from pc to console if anything it's stronger on pc another thing though is that you are going to be squishy if you build deadeye the proper way if you are expecting to have the amount of damage that i have you will be susceptible to flanking maneuvers if someone comes up behind you you will die as you can see here i take down this enemy sniper but there is someone behind me and i drop insanely fast uh, though I did get the kill, he was able to kill me because he got behind me, I wasn't paying attention, and he flanked me. Now, another thing to note is that you are actually able to out-damage enemy builds sometimes that even have a tack link. He pops his tack link here, I fire off a few shots, and I can drop him that quickly. His tack link, you know, he had no chance. He had absolutely no chance, and it's important to know that this is what I've found to be the highest damage output build in the game right now. However, there is a little bit of competition between this and Striker with like an SASG or something similar. That's going to wrap it up for the gameplay, guys. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for the video. If you want to support the channel, if you want to get integrated with our many vibrant communities, please check out the links down below. And as always, have a nice night.